Assalamu and welcome to AdTrief.com. In today's video, we're gonna go over my process of storing this sexy new tank that I have set up. It's a 13 week process. In this video, I'm gonna go over every single step that I took to store this aquarium. I'm not gonna go into details because that's for another video. But if you would like to see how this thing came about, stay tuned and watch. But be sure to like, subscribe, and visit my website at www.adreef.com where you can find more information about this tank and all the new and future processes. Enjoy! Okay, so let's get started. For my aquarium, I used Project Reef Rock 2.1 Dry Rock. I did not use Live Rock because I was not really in uh, found of introducing any more parasite to my aquarium than I need to. So for my application, I use man-made rocks. I mean, they look beautiful. Yes, they might be a little expensive, but as far as the look, the prestige, and the quantity that you get, I think is the way to go. It's the new future of it's the new future of reefing, in my opinion. Using um, dry rock is the best way to go because who wants unwanted parasite introduced to their reef tank? In order to glue them together and stick them, first thing that came up to my mind is to use coral glue and some super glue from Bark Reef Supply. And as you can see, I made the coral glue the way that it was written on the manual and I added some super glue to give it some more strength and I kind of put it together thinking that it would do the job but uh, I have to be honest it, it even putting it together did not seem really uh, really powerful and it did not dry as a rock it kind of gave it this rubbery texture and uh, even it looks fine by looking at it but once you try to wiggle it or take it apart here's what happens to the coral glue or the coral tunzi coral gum and i have to say it was a fell in the product and i did not like it and as you can see everything just comes off and maybe it's good product for use of gluing corals together but as far as that did not use it so the next thing that i had to do is to wash the rock even though they're not real reef rocks you still need to wash them to get some of those uh, unwanted dust and uh, unwanted stuff that is on it off of it and uh, for my application i did not use uh, rodi water because it was not necessary at this point so i as you can see i washed the rocks thoroughly and completely using high pressure water and I tried to get every single detritus that I could off of it to make it free of anything. And when, one thing that you need to know, when you are trying to cycle your rocks, you, need, you cannot just throw them together. You have to put them separately so the water can move around it. And uh, I added uh, RODI water at this point and um, I filled it up. And just for another step, I used the... Uh, biofilter media in my aquarium and I thought that this block will uh, help. Another thing that after the water was set up I used the heater, power head and my Tunzi uh, protein skimmer as well as I added the Dr. Foster one and only by Dr. Tim and uh, Instant Ocean uh, Reef Accelerator just to give the water some parasite. And I left the door of that a little open, but I did not leave it completely open. And for the protein skimmer, this came out early. I used the Vertec protein skimmer, and I gotta say, this baby looks absolutely fantastic. The quality is just phenomenal. So today is the day to get my aquarium. It's the week three, and after months of waiting from Volunteer Express, my aquarium came about. And again, I ordered my aquarium to glass cages. I gotta say that I'm not really happy with the quality that they had, but I had no other option. If I knew, I would have gone and took different route, but they sent it through uh, Volunteer Express. The shipping company was fantastic, but the quality of the aquarium is not what I thought. 
So I went to Home Depot to get something from the bottom of the tank. As you know, you cannot just have the tank sit. Uh, so you need to put something underneath it. I use, uh, I try to use uh, some foam, but I decided not to go with the foam and just go uh, with the wood on the bottom of the tank. For the stand, I use uh, Primo Reef Acrylic, the luxury aquarium manufacturer, and they uh, hooked me up with the T-slot aluminum stand, and it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, look at the quality on this stand. It just, just screams, it screams quality. And if I knew, I would if I knew they make glass, I would have make, had them make my aquarium as well. And if you think you're gonna have one trip to the Home Depot, you are wrong. I went Home Depot back and forth so many times during this process that it's not even funny. My wife was like, how many times are you gonna go to Home Depot? But I had to do it. Some of the stuff that I wanted it, I think, I thought I have it. But after I come home, I figure out that, oh, I need something else. Now again, uh, for the t slot aluminum, it's really simple to put them together. I have a video that uh, you could check out. It was my last episode that I went over uh, the t slot aquarium stand uh, trolley. But uh, it's just very simple. It's just as easy as one, two, three. And I have to say, it was, it was really nice the way that it was hassle-free and the way that it was sharp. I mean, of course, I'm gonna get doors uh, for around the aquarium, but as far as right now, I think this would do the justice and this would be enough till uh, I have a, a representative from Home Depot to come look at it, measure it, and I'm gonna order my cabinet around my stand. This gives me the luxury of uh, changing the color, changing the type, and it's just modularity. So now again, uh, I went to Home Depot again. I did not go with the uh, foam, but I picked up a piece of uh, wood. I had them cut it to the same size dimensions that I needed and I put them together. As far as the heater, I went with the Phoenix heater 200 watt. And I have to say this heater is absolutely fantastic for what I need. It's a 200 watt heater and it has a controller on it. For my sump, left and right side of my sump, I decided to pick up two of these small power head just to give the water a little bit of agitation so the water doesn't settle. For my return pump, I decided to go with the Wartec Ecotec Marine pump. And I have to say this pump is absolutely fantastic. It's the best pump that is out there. And for the price that you pay, it does the job and some more. For my probe, I decided to go with the Neptune System probe holder. And I think this is not necessary, but it just looks sharp. For my sump uh, refugium, I decided to go with the Kessel A360 uh, LED light. And I have to say, I'm really happy. And I have the spectral controller to control and dim the light as I need it. And I think it's really good. As far as cleaning and doing the maintenance, I decided to go with the siphon uh, tube that I can help me clean. For my power, I went with Kilowatt PS10, which is a surge protector 10 outlet. And I think it's absolutely the beast. It will show you your usage and everything. The start of the show, of course, is the Neptune System Apex Controller Gold. This Apex Control is absolutely fantastic. It does everything for you and some more. And as you can see, it comes with a lot of goodies. And that's what I like. And here's the controller. And I have to say, it does the job. Now, here's a quick look at the aquarium as far as I have at the sump. I mean, the setup is going to change, but as far as right now, I think it looks pretty fun. Uh, again, the sump is by trigger system is the 34 size. Uh, yes, uh, and I like it. For the power, I put a little tonsy fan over there in case the water gets too hot. It will help cool it down, but from where I am, I don't need a chiller. I don't need anything more than that. And I think my water would be in a desired level that I need. Uh, for the back of my aquarium, I decided to go with the Blue Life uh, water background and even it looked good on the paper, it did, not, it did not do the job and I didn't like it. So I went to Home Depot and I had them make uh, some paint for me. Again, I had to drive back and forth and I decided to paint the back of my aquarium the way that I wanted. 
but first you have to clean it. And since there is no invertebrates or there is no anything on the tank, I use Windex to just clean the glass of the aquarium and at this point does the job. Make sure to use the paint tape around the aquarium even if you are really careful. You want to have a really really clean job done. So that's why I use the, this blue tape to do the job. Now the paint roll that you want to choose, you have to make sure that it's sponge. That way the paint is even and there is no, uh, there's no problem on it. And you want to paint it many, many times, over and over and over. I painted my aquarium like 10 layers of paint. And warning, do not try this at home, but I had no other option as I live in a, an apartment and I had to cut the board uh, to make room for uh, my return pump and uh, the drain pump of my sump. But again, do not try this at home. This is very dangerous. After I looked at the video, I told myself what I was thinking. This is absolutely crazy, but I had no other option. And uh, I decided to go with this. And one more thing, make sure to clean up after yourself. But uh, I guess uh, after a while, my wife kind of uh, uh, understands and that's it. So again, another one, uh, another layer of paint is uh, absolute necessity. I thought before ripping the tape off, just give it one more paint. And as you can see, it looks flawless. I mean, this aquarium, and I'm sorry for the blurriness, looks great. Now again, before putting everything together, make sure to dry fit everything. And make sure that you have room for everything in your sump and everything actually fits. Because I hate it, I see it in YouTube over and over again that they put this stuff and uh, it just doesn't fit. And you don't want that. You wanna make sure that everything is dry fitted, everything fits actually in place, and you have no problem of uh, hooking everything to each other and that will help you along the run with the hassle. One more thing that I want to make sure to let you guys know is that get some tools. Without the tools, it's kind of hard. This is the first attempt and after this, I went back to Home Depot and I got some more tools. And in another side, if you are uh, epoxying uh, uh, your Schedule 40s, make sure to put the glue and conditioner on both end of the both fittings in the male and the female. That would ensure that all around your fitting there is uh, glue and epoxy. And one more thing that you need to know is that after you put them all together, uh, they actually like to kind of slip out. So put a little bit of pressure on it. This will ensure that uh, they would stick uh, and they would glue on the size that you need it and the size will not change. It's a little bit of pressure. So going on to uh, paint uh, the wood on the bottom of my tank, I decided to go with the spray paint and spray paint the plywood that I got. But this is another product fail. And that's why in the last episode I mentioned it's really good and handy to get extra stuff. So I went to Home Depot and I got wood stain and I decided to paint it myself using wood stain. And again, this takes many application that you have to paint it, let it dry, paint it, and let it dry again. But at the end of the war, at the end of the day, it looks absolutely amazing. And I think it's worth it to actually paint it yourself rather than using um, spray paint. Spray paint, it was terrible. It was terrible. It was not consistent. It looked horrible. And maybe I wasn't proficient with it and uh, I give you preps if you are can do it perfectly, but it wasn't the job for me. As far as cleaning the stuff that I have, I tried to I use citric acid. I stayed away from vinegar, even though it helps, but it's too strong of vinegar. So I think citric acid from Tonzi is actually does the job and some more. So before putting the power head into my tank, even though they're new, I decided to use um, citric acid to just uh, give them a little rinse for a couple of minutes and make sure that they don't have anything on them. I mean, they don't, but 
it's just that I wanted to see how it would react and it was good and I liked it. So this is week nine, everything is put together, not completely, but it's about to get filled up. The tank is about to get filled up. I'm happy, it, it looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, the aquarium looks really, really nice right now. And I'm, I'm very happy with what I have so far. And I think uh, there is some minor tweaks that needs to be made. But aside from that, it looks good. I think for now, I have everything in place. Everything looks good and uh, I'm uh, kind of ready to uh, do it. Uh, and of course, I have my Imperial Aquatic UV Sterilizer. This is a must for me. You don't have to have the UV Sterilizer, but I think having a UV Sterilizer is an absolute necessity because it will help, uh, it will help get rid of unwanted parasites. And uh, I'm filling this aquarium with RODI water and uh, I added two uh, air stone to just aerate the water and here's my dog Pepe and my wife uh, uh, but uh, going back to the aquarium I added two air stone to aerate the water and I'm gonna let the water inside an aquarium being aerated for at least one and a half to two days and for the water I have used the BRS already I system deluxe six stage um, water purification system and I think uh, with those two together, I think this is going to be very solid. But you want to aerate the water before adding your salt. And I don't have the um, luxury of making the salt, uh, making my salt water outside. But uh, I decided to go with this route uh, on this volume. So uh, after a day and a half when the water is completely aerated, I am uh, kind of ready to add the salt. And in this application, I am using Coro Pro Salt by Red Sea. And I think this salt is absolutely the beast. It does the job and some more, and it adds some trace element to the water, which is exactly what I need. And here's a slow motion of me adding the salt to the aquarium, and it looks fantastic. I gotta tell you guys, it feels really, really nice having uh, the tank uh, come up this far without any leaks and uh, without any problems so far. So far he's doing a good job, but uh, we'll see what happens uh, later on. And again, uh, I'm adding the salt right now and uh, slowly, I could have added at the same time, but I try to do it slowly. And still the next day, the water is still cloudy, the salt is still being mixed and uh, it takes a couple of days. After about a day and a half, I use the reflectometer to measure the water salinity and do the minor adjustment that I need to make, add, which is add salt or add some RODI water to balance the water and bring it to the right salinity that I want. Now it's time to sand. And I, for this application, I used Fiji pink uh, sand and uh, I used the uh, clarifier afterward to just help clarify the water and even though I use the clarifier the next day it's still cloudy and it takes some time for the cloud to go away and which is completely understandable and uh, uh, it's uh, it's the way to do now I'm um, setting up the apex it takes a long time to set the apex up and uh, I'm gonna add the instant ocean bio spiral uh, to my aquarium I think this will help the bacteria to grow and it will add a little boost by the bacteria that is already in the biospiral. Now after 10 weeks of the rocks being uh, cured, it's ready for some minor adjustment uh, which is adding a little bit of hold inside in there and uh, it's getting ready to be placed inside of my aquarium. Now one thing is that you don't want the rock outside of the water for more than an hour because if you do have it outside of the water for more than an hour, it will kill all the bacteria on it. Not all of it, but most of it. And it will just become a, a source of nitrate inside of your tank. So I recommend uh, doing this uh, in a very timely fashion, one by one and add them to your tank, which is uh, exactly what I did. I brought them out piece by piece, I fixed them, and then I put them inside of my aquarium. And the process of this, it will take some time. For the light, I use the Ecotech Marine uh, Pro Gen 3 
uh, light and I have to say this is absolutely fantastic and if you add the Ecotec reef link to it this is all you need so my power head my light and my return pump are all controllable and of course for your refugium you have to use some refugium starter mod by, by Walt Smith which would just add some more good beneficial bacteria and trace element that you need and uh, it will make your water cloudy now it's week 12 and i'm here ready to add my cleanup crew and uh, it is just absolutely fantastic this is my cleanup crew and my second patch of fish uh, and I've, i'm sorry that i didn't i forgot to take shot of uh, my first patch of fish that i added to my aquarium which is two uh, beautiful clown fish that you're gonna see shortly but uh, that was weeks ago and now i'm ready for adding the cleanup crew and adding my second batch of fish and as you can see the cleanup crew is right here and they're trying to get acclimated with the temperature and after the temperature has been adjusted i'm gonna acclimate them using a uh, different uh, using a drip method and uh, right in the corner i decided to add some uh, plankton to the tank uh, some trigger pods to just uh, uh, just have some live coca pot inside the water so the fish can feast on and they can populate inside of my refugium because I did added some chetomorpha which is the spaghetti algae inside of my refugium as well. Now everything is being drip acclimated and um, I am uh, getting ready to add them to the tank and it's just a little bit of process but in a while hopefully they will be in there. So. Uh, they are added and this is the quick shot of the sump and what i have right now and i have to say this this looks absolutely fantastic i think the uh, refugium mud and the chetomorpha and the salt and the sump and the protein skimmer and everything kind of hand in hand are working absolutely fantastically and they're uh, they're working together really really good this uh I have to say this uh, sump is an amazing sump even though it has some falls but it works absolutely great and the way that I have set up my tank I am not hearing any noise this aquarium is dead silence there is no noise that you can hear from this aquarium and it works beautifully and I decided to have my UV sterilizer standing up um, and uh, everything all the cords are up in the air there is no cord on the ground and everything as you can see the the floor is there's nothing on it and uh, in case there is some water spills nothing happens but uh, everything looks beautiful right now and uh, it's I'm, I'm ready to go to the next step of this process uh, which is at the biological uh, filtration and again, this is the this is a float valve kit that I put in case the RODI system decided to pump up too much water. This would ensure that the water stops, even though I have the tons of osmolator and it's not gonna happen. But having that extra bit of security is all about. And again, I have the Madison float switch on top of that in case stuff went wrong. And I have the Madison switch connected to my breakout box uh, from Neptune system Apex. Again, this is all, this all the aquarium is just all talking together. And uh, here's the return pump. Here's I have a, uh, just a couple of safety measures. And as you can see, it's been uh, hard plumbed all the way up and it, it just looks beautifully. And it's hard, it's uh, uh, plumbed, uh, hard plumb all the way down, except uh, the connection to the sump because I wanted to give it a little bit of room in case I need to move something that will ensure me that I have some room. Now my protein skimmer is connected to a universal air filter that has CO2 absorbent inside of it and this will help that the oxygen that my protein skimmer is pumping to my tank is pure oxygen. So this will raise up your pH and it will help your aquarium in so many levels. So it's really good to add the CO2 absorbent. It's a cheap and uh, it's not actually not that cheap, but it it's assures you that everything 
work together. And on top of that, I added the leak detection system by Neptune Apex. Apex. And uh, uh, for the pump, again, I have the two Vortec MP10 pumps, and I think this would give it enough power. I didn't need the, didn't see the need to get the MP40s. I'm not even running these at 100%. And even though I'm using the APAC system, I added the JBJ True Temp uh, heater controller. This again ensures the next level of safety so my heater doesn't go crazy. And it's just all kind of uh, safety after safety after safety in order to prevent everything. Now, I use the two uh, Cisco uh, pump, one for um, my uh, uh, GFO carbon and two extra holes, as you can see, in case I needed to add something later on and expand my system, you always have to take measurement for it. And one of it goes to my UV sterilizer again, that one for my G GFO, and this is for carbon, and it's all kind of hard plumbed together. And uh, it, it looks absolutely fantastic. And I gotta say, this is all working together hand in hand, uh, make it easy and simple. Just to add another protection, I added the Nest Protect smoke alarm on here, and it's connected to the ethernet in case something happened or there isn't a smoke, God forbid. It will let me know and I can um, I can do something about it as soon as possible. Uh, so here's week 13. Um, everything is doing great. Uh, I haven't had any casualty. The water looks absolutely pristine and I think uh, it's beautiful. I have again four livestock in my tank, two antias and two uh, snowflake clownfish, uh, and uh, they they just they just look they just look beautiful. And I think the way that the tank is set up, the tank looks prestige. I, it's been 13 weeks and I had not had to clean the glass. That's how prestige the tank, the tank is. For the feeding, I used the Neptune system, uh, Apex Auto Feeder, along with uh, the Innovative Marine uh, Gadget, Aqua Gadget, to just uh, help me with the feeding process. And I feed twice a day at nine o'clock in the morning and at nine o'clock at night. And here's the return uh, side of the tank and um, here's the JBJ True Temp. I put the temp up there to measure the temperature on top of, uh, on the actual system and I have the Apex controller measuring the temperature in the bottom. For the cleaning the glass, uh, I use the Tundi Care Magnet Glass Cleaner. This is the long version. This is not the, uh, the strong magnet because I didn't need and I didn't didn't need it and I think this is just uh, works absolutely perfectly with uh, my system and everything is kind of working really really good together right now and I think I am ready to add my GFO and carbon at this point of time to my system to give it that extra boost of uh, cleaning the aquarium and as you can see the water is prestige is absolutely fantastic so here's week 14 and i am adding my brs uh, gfo and carbon reactor deluxe to my system again i have rinsed the gfo and the carbon already and uh, for gfo and carbon i decided to go again with bulk reef supply premium rox.8 uh, gfo and uh, uh, carbon i'm sorry and the gfo by bulk reef supply and as you can see, I have connected them to those two outlets and uh, they, they work really, really nice uh, together and I could adjust the flow of uh, how much flow I wanted to go actually inside the reactor for each pump uh, with one pump and I can adjust the flow using uh, two valve and I have again two extra valve in case I needed to add something I made a mess over there. In case I needed to add something in the future, uh, I have options. And it's all about option and giving yourself room. And it will help me do the water change. And then uh, in the return of the GFO and the carbon, I added those float valve over there in case, just to give me more uh, controllability in case I wanted to dial up the water coming out uh, precisely I have the option to dial them again. It's all about giving yourself 
uh, modularity and I think this this is a very good system that I have set up uh, for my aquarium and uh, for my setup and I, and I hope that I give you guys a kind of an idea on what you guys need to do in order to set up this uh, your aquarium and I think the way that I did it is maybe not be the right way but I think it's uh, it's a way that uh, actually works for me and uh, the water is kind of cloud a little bit cloudy because I add I did a little bit of water change right now and I'm doing the water change uh, every two weeks 10% uh, and uh, didn't need the I didn't see a need to do the water change every week with the system that I have set up. It gives me the leverage of doing the water change every two weeks. And I may have to do the water change every one week when I add more uh, prestige corals and uh, more bio, I add more bio load to my system. But as far as right now, this is what I have. Uh, and again, for the auto top off, I'm using a shop uh, uh, water canteen which uh, has a little valve over that shows how much water you have. And for extra protection, I added the basement watchdog uh, battery power water alarm in, in case there's water on the floor. I have four of these set up and I have the 511 industrial flashlight that is waterproof. So it could help me look inside the sump when there is no light and uh, gives me, uh, it, it helps me do a little bit of maintenance and look where I need to look. But adding all this measurement, it helps. And as you can see, I have labeled every single cable in here to help me know uh, what is what. Again, this is all uh, hand together. So be sure to check out my other episodes. Be sure to like my videos, subscribe to see more of these uh, videos. And uh, don't forget uh, to come back on post videos. Try to post them every, every other week or every week. Uh, depending on the material and I will keep you guys posted again thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and stay tuned for more videos to come